Hi folks and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is a variation on Steve Cullen's popper fry. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H970 barbless hook. It's a long shank hook. This one's at size 8. It's on a heavy wire and finished in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Simplify. It's nano silk at 100D, which makes it around 6 aught. And as you can see, it's black. As always with the nano silks, I'm going to add a little touch of super glue to the shank. Apologies for the super glue brush. It's getting to that time with the super glue where I have ordered another one. And I was hoping it was going to be here before shooting this video. But the posties let me down. And subsequently, I've still got the old one. Now, I'm going to get a bed of thread down here. About halfway up the shank and then I'm going to come all the way back to approximately three millimeters from the eye of the hook. I can then come in with my snips and remove my waist. Now I'm going to switch to the other camera because what I'm going to do next is show you how I create the popper bit. Now what I use is some of these foam blocks. You get them from Uphaven and they come in various colours. This is the, I think it's steel grey they call it, I can't quite recall. Now I've already cut a cylinder out with uh, the Gunville cutters and what I want to do is using my old scissors, never use um, good scissors on foam, it just blunts them. I'm going to cut diagonally so I've got two parts of the tube like so. Now the next thing to do is just very carefully lightly trim around your cylinder at the top not the slanted end the other end if you, my fingers are covering this up at the moment once you've done that I like to put a bodkin needle just to hold it away from my fingers I'm going to come in with a lighter and just very briefly give it a little burst of the lighter what this does is seals the foam stops water saturating the flag which will make it sink and just finishes off the corners nicely now let's go back to the other camera so what I like to do is the foam slit I lay it on top of the shank and I want as much of the the foam in use as possible so where the slit ends sorry where the slant ends just at the top here that's where I want my thread to come over initially just going to catch that in and don't worry about the position of the the popper at the moment just concentrate on getting that lashed down now once you've got it in in position you can mess about with it a little bit and what I like to do is then come over hard and make sure that's going nowhere now you want to always encourage your popper section to come down over the eye of the hook. The more in line with the shank it is, the better action you'll get with this fly. Now one of the things um, with Steve Cullen's version of the fly that I always find a bit frustrating is the eyes. So when when you start fishing with these and, and the fish hit them fairly hard, hence the heavy gauge hook, I find that after a few fish the eyes just come away. Um, maybe my bad tying but I think I've found a solution to that. So what I'm going to be using is some of these clear cure eyes. Uh, these are the, the quarter inch steel and they come in this little packet. You don't get very many and uh, they are quite expensive. But what I would say is once you tie them in, as you can see here, it's just a stem. It's very seldom that you'll lose any eyes after this. So I'm going to force them up to where uh, my popper head starts and excuse my fingers I'm getting two or three turns just over and I'm going to figure of eight over the top of that and I'm going to do it a few times just to make sure that's going to go nowhere and what I don't want to do is have any turning off the eyes so once I've got that into place and I'll just check that I've got a good few wraps in there 
what I want to do is again come in with my crappy super glue brush and just touch up touch the super glue just to where the eyes are sitting like so and that's looking not too bad at the minute now I would always be every you'll see me fiddling with this head quite a bit because I want it to sit forward here okay so far so good next then I'm going to bring my thread all the way back to the pronounced bump there's no barb it's just a little bump here uh, and when when you fish these sort of flies there's a good chance that you can pick up some resident fish so they're a fairly good size make sure you use a good a good um, standard of hook if you if you cut the costs on your hooks you'll pay the price on the boat so what I've got here is a hank of uh, holographic silver and what I want to do is just take off a small part of this now twice the length of the the hook is where I, how I usually judge it and I'm just going to tie that in all the way up to the shank there just open turns to get me back up there another couple of figure of eights over the eyes never hurts and then I can bring that all the way down the shank of the hook and back to my pronounced bump now I'm just going to check there's some bits, raggedy bits at the tail here I don't particularly want so I'll just come in and trim that it was quite a challenge to um, do an instructional video on this fly because there's quite a lot going on with it and uh, there's lots of different aspects where the macro lens on the camera you're looking at now just won't cover what I'm doing hence the switching between cameras so I've got a mink strip here you can see this one's uh, white with a tinge of green on the top uh, I can't remember where I got it I'm gonna say Cobb Candy but they know they're no longer trading at the moment but I'm sure other people do this style of uh, Zonker strip White, white and green is a great colour for this. So what I want to do next then is just uh, on the other camera I'm going to take two or three millimetres off the Zonka strip so I've got a little tie-in spot and then I'm going to catch that in at the, the tail end here. Just try and make sure all the bits and bobs are out of the way. And you want to catch in at least a couple of millimetres. Although by the time we're finished, you'll not be worrying about this coming off. Just make sure it's trapped in there. Then we're going to come all the way back to just before the eyes here. And I'm going to create a dubbing loop. Now this is something you'll rarely see me do because... I'm a great fan of just splitting the thread, uh, I much prefer to do that but on this occasion and with bigger flies you can't beat a good old fashioned dub and loop. So I've caught that in, I've got my loop here, I did have my loop spinner here which I've got and what I'm going to do is just catch that and then lay it down to this side. So the dubbing, what I'm going to use is some of this stuff. Now unfortunately I've lost the packet, I've just got it loose in a drawer but it's kind of like a light bright material. I think it's from Simplify and I'm going to blend that with some silver dubbing from Troutline. So I'll just take a bit out of the packet, sorry I should have had that done. And then I'm going to take some of the, the UV dubbing off and I'm simply going to blend it in my hands uh, no coffee grinder for me just blend it up in my hands and then what I'm going to do is while I've got it in my fingers I'm going to stretch it out like so and then using one of these loon tools 
I'm simply going to capture that in and that will make it easier for me to put it into the dubbing loop. Now before I insert it into the loop I want my thread up this end of the fly. So once you have your thread up towards the top of the fly where you're going to secure it, come in with your clip and just get that into position. Now, I don't do this very often, uh, but it is a lot easier for the bigger flies, as I've said. So I'm going to just wrap that up. And once I've got that into position, I can just thin it out a little bit. Now, it's important that you don't throw this bit away. You're going to need that. So just put it at the base of your vise. And we'll come back to that in a second. Now make sure your mink strip is out the way. Come all the way back to the tail. Now at this tail bit, you'll notice that we've got a little step where I've tied in the mink strip. So I don't want too much of this going over the top of that. It'll be hidden, but I don't want to bulk it up any more than it already is. So I'll come over the top. And this fly is obviously designed to be fished um, at a fairly good pace. So, you know, you want to have it on a 15 to 18 foot leader, single fly. And it's ideal for fishing over weed beds as it's, it never really sinks and gets caught up in weed. Uh, but it'll fish just as well in open water, I suspect. So each time I bring a turn over, I'm simply slicking it back like a wood fritz and capturing that all into place now as I get up near the eye what I can do with this is come over in a figure of eight once more and then secure the whole lot in and I know it looks a bit like a hot mess at the moment but please trust me it will come good so now I've got it secured I can just trim away my dubbing loop and then just to make sure I've got that into place I'm going to just do a quick figure of eight through the eyes like so okay so, as I said, it looks a bit like a hot mess. I've got a wire brush here, and what I want to do is comb down both sides. And what I'm looking to do with this wire brush, really, is just to get a nice flat area where my mink strip's going to sit on. So, if I tilt the vise this way, you might be able to see a bit better. Now don't don't be worrying about all the all the dubbing hanging down below the hook and cloaking the hook. We'll sort that out shortly shortly. The next thing we've got to do then is bring our mink strip over the top. And what I want to do with mine is I want it to finish just where the popper eye starts. So a good way of doing it is just pull some of the the fur back and once you're content you've found your mark lick your thumb and forefinger your right hand and just pull that out of the way now the temptation is to trim it now and then tie it in but that doesn't work particularly well uh, and I know this through trial and error now before we bring that strip over to help with the longevity of the fly I'm going to just add, oh, I wish that super glue had arrived, some super glue to the top of the fly here. Now, obviously, if I'd had some 
new super glue this would have gone a lot smoother but needs must that's that done so once I've got that layer of glue which is not very tidy and I will chastise myself later I can bring that over get one turn of thread now before I do anything else I'm just going to press the zonker strip down so that it adheres to that super glue so once I've got one in I generally like to have two or three always been a bit of a belts and braces man and then I can come in with my scissors and remove the remainder now let me just show you the top of it. it doesn't look very tidy at the minute so you can see I've got a little bit left over and uh, that's no accident again this is the bit that might end up knackered so you don't want to take any chances with it popping out while you're fishing so that's looking pretty good now if you remember the little bit that we took when we were doing our dubbing I can bring that back around and I'm just going to catch that on uh, as you would any other kind of dubbing now what I can do with that is come over in a figure of eight and just try and slick everything back at this point and what I want to do is just catch that around the eye underneath the popper and I'm going to put a couple of half hitches in now I just find it easier using my fingers at this point than trying to use a whip finish tool and I keep missing where I want that thread to go so bear with me doesn't always go right that's it, got it that time and then again I can come in and remove my thread so slowly but surely we are getting there now before I start with the wire brush what I want to do is just drop in some UV resin right in at the head a good splodge of it again I want to just encourage that popper eye to sit forward And I'm going to invert my vise and just add a little bit to the head here. And then we can cure that off. Again, all the while it's all about keeping that popper head in line with the shank. Give you a much better action. And obviously the resin there is helping to keep that right. Now when you tie these flies on, it can be a bit of a pain to get your tippet through um, where your eye is, but it's, it's worth the effort, you get a good effect. Okay, so next we come in with our wire brush, and as I said we don't want to cloak the hook, so I'm just going to sweep everything back. like so. Now you'll notice that this fly although it looks similar it doesn't quite look the same as the one I showed you when we started. The way I get that effect is simply use a pro marker and this one's called <laughs> Burnt Umber. It's brown. I, why do they come up with these mental names for colours nowadays? It's beyond me. <laughs> Burnt Umber. I okay. So I take my brown pro marker then and I just add a little bit of colour in like so. Now if I leave that uh, it dries off you don't want to be 
handling it too much while it's still wet or you'll end up with brown fingers or burnt umber fingers whatever you want to call it but there we go now uh, it's a big morsel and hopefully it will catch you lots of fish